I would like to welcome everyone to our first virtual peace assembly. Every year, Blythe Academy gathers students, staff, parents, and special guests to honor and remember fallen soldiers of the past and to celebrate peace. This year, due to the COVID-19 pandemic precautions, our Peace Assembly Committee has created this beautiful video to commemorate once again this important occasion. In our video, you will see students sharing various messages of peace and remembrance in English, French, and Arabic, showcasing our multi-languages and respect we have for those who have fought and continue to fight today for a more peaceful world. Our Canadian Ambassador to Qatar her Excellency McCollum and some Canadian troops in Canada will also be delivering commemorative virtual messages to our school community. The 2020 theme for the International Day of Peace, which is officially celebrated on September 21st of each year, was Shaping Peace Together. The message for us to reflect on is how each one of us can help to spread compassion, kindness, and hope in the face of this worldwide pandemic we are experiencing. If we stand together globally, we can shape peace together and eventually overcome this virus. Peace be upon you. It is used as a greeting within Muslim communities. Allah has forbidden the killing of the soul and corruption on the earth over the ages, times and religions, and this is mentioned in the Holy Quran in more than one verse. The Prophet commanded us to spread peace among you. Allah said in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Whoever kills a soul unless for a soul or for corruption done in the land, it is as if he had slain mankind entirely. And whoever saves one, it is as if he had saved mankind entirely. And our messengers had certainly come to them with clear proofs. Then indeed many of them, even after that, throughout the land were transgressors. Thank you. 
Blythe students, and thank you for including me in your annual Peace Day ceremonies. I am saddened by the fact that I will not get to participate in person this year to hear your uh, wonderful poems and songs and thoughts about the importance of peace. Uh, but uh, these are unusual times and I am still pleased to hear that you will be doing a peace day uh, and it, it falls on the same day as Remembrance Day in Canada which uh, is an opportunity for us to honor the brave Canadian men and women in uniform who've served our country throughout our history. They've built peace, they've defended democracy, and they've enabled countless people to live in freedom at home uh, in Canada and around the world. So today we pay tribute to our veterans, to those who've been injured in the line of duty, and to all those who've made the ultimate sacrifice. They stood for liberty and sacrificed their future for the future of others. Their selflessness and courage continues to inspire Canadians who serve today. So at your peace ceremony this morning at 11 o'clock, I encourage you and I hope that you will join us uh, in observing two minutes of silence in recognition for the brave Canadians who fought for us. Today, we thank our service members, past and present, for all they've done to keep us safe and the world safe. They represent the very best of what it means to be Canadian, lest we forget. Peace. A word describing what we, as a humanity, want to achieve. Peace, meaning to treat one another with respect and equality. Peace, where civilization lives in harmony and cohesion, which then leads to freedom. A world without peace is a world without security. Is this too much to ask for? How many more lives need to be lost in order for peace to be served? We have to use our voices to make a change. This is the generation that needs to be heard. What does peace even mean? Is it finding your inner peace, fixing conflict and creating world peace? Or sitting on a hill, stargazing? Peace is to be free of worries and to be fearless of any risks in life. To obtain happiness, you need peace. Or is it to obtain peace, you need happiness? You need to do the things you love and live your life to the fullest. For what is the point of life if what you're living for is pointless? Peace is when individuals halt battling and resolve their issues. Equality and equity play a big role in peace, as it relies on being fair to both sides. No matter who or what they release. Peace is a powerful and ultimate solution to the notion that violence provides any viable solution. Where war destroys and tears apart, peace can build, strengthen, and restore love into the heart. No matter what the definition of peace means to you, travelers often dream of passing through. Filled with flowing rivers and amazing lands, Peace is the paradise we want to hand. Down to the children, an astonishing place, living different tribes of every race, respecting and accepting that everyone's the same, despite the religion, culture, language, and history. Now that's a place where peace can be, living together in harmony. Hi everyone, my name is Harjit Sajjan, Minister of National Defence for Canada. On Remembrance Day, we remember the bravery of our veterans and we reflect on the sacrifices they made to fight for our freedom and defend Canada. This is also a time to think of the people who are serving in the Canadian Armed Forces today so that our country, our values and our way of life are well defended. They are the veterans of tomorrow lest we forget. Hello, I'm a member of the Canadian Armed Forces and I am proud to join a number of my colleagues in this video and share our story with you today. 
Like all members of the military, my job is to keep you and Canada safe. On Remembrance Day, we remember Canadian sailors, soldiers and aviators who have risked or even lost their lives so we could live with freedoms, in peace and enjoying our Canadian way of life. We remember those Canadians who left their families, friends and communities during times of conflict and war for months or even years at a time to fight for freedom and for peace. They did so and continue to do so, knowing that they may never come home again. Picture yourself in the 1940s, walking for hours, carrying a heavy backpack, drenched in rain or sweating through extreme heat. You haven't bathed or eaten a meal that didn't come out of a can in weeks. You dig a deep hole in the ground to catch a few hours sleep, which is often interrupted by a duty watch or an enemy attack. You are a Canadian soldier. Feel the freezing winds and water of the Atlantic as you stand watch for enemy submarines and airplanes trying to stop you from delivering vital supplies. You may be in knee-deep water that has flooded your ship and you haven't seen land for weeks. You are a Canadian sailor. Now you're flying through fog, clouds and rain in the dark of night without radar. The enemy artillery shells rock your plane and test your courage. You don't know whether you'll make it back to the airfield or crash into enemy territory, but you have to continue on to drop bombs on your target. You are a Canadian aviator. You are one of one million Canadians who wonder if you'll ever come home again, if you'll ever kiss your mother or hug your father again, if you'll ever grow old. 45,000 Canadians did not. They never returned from the Second World War. On Remembrance Day, we also pay tribute to veterans of the Korean and Afghanistan wars, as well as numerous other international missions. More than 500 Canadians lost their lives in Korea and 158 Canadian Armed Forces members did not come back from Afghanistan. Many who returned carried the consequences of war with them battling long-term physical, psychological, and emotional wounds. Despite the unimaginable challenges, generations of our bravest and best Canadians have risked their lives for our freedom. Determined to keep Canadians safe, to defend our way of life, and to try and make the world a better place. That's something we must never forget, the unimaginable heroism and great sacrifices made by our Canadian veterans. Today, Canadian Armed Forces members continue to risk their own health and safety to protect others. While many continue to be deployed overseas on United Nations and NATO missions, others serve here at home. Responding to natural disasters like floods, forest fires and snowstorms across the country. Carrying out life-saving search and rescue missions by air, ground and sea responding to about 1,000 search and rescue calls each year. More recently, others put their medical training to work, helping to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Whatever and wherever the need, Canadians can count on us to keep them safe and our country safe, just as our veterans did. That's the link that ties today's military members with those who came before us. We are all part of the Canadian family. And we are all in this together. Thank you. Au champ d'honneur. Au champ d'honneur, les coquelicots sont parsemés de l'eau en l'eau. Auprès des croix et dans l'espace, les alouettes devenues las mêlent leur chant au sifflement des obusiers. Nous sommes morts. Nous qui songeons la veille encore à nos parents, à nos amis, nous reposons ici au champ d'honneur. À vous, jeunes désabusés, à vous de porter l'or et les flammes et de garder dans votre âme le goût de vivre en liberté. Acceptez le défi, sinon les coquelicots se faneront au champ d'honneur. In Flanders Fields by John McRae In Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place 
And in the sky, the lark still bravely singing, fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived. Felt dawn. Saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. My fears really 
deep breaths to bring me composure, for I've been through this one too many times. The hate-filled explosions that continue to intoxicate my mind, the deafening sounds of gunfire echoing in my ears, the dreadful bang of one's musket lined perfectly to my temple, the constant decayed smell of death. I trudged through the trench, my feet aching, sinking deeper and deeper. The bodies of the dead are scattered, releasing a foul stench of decay, filling my lungs. Explosions resonate through the battlefield, my ears ringing. Within the ringing, I still hear the cries of men. The freezing winds paralyze my fingers and blur the vision of my dry, stinging eyes. I fight through the merciless blizzard holding onto my life, hoping to see my family one more time. Before I meet my fate, chaos surrounds me. My comrades' eyes reflect pure terror as they fear for their lives. The uncertainty of whether tomorrow is guaranteed. They say the present is a gift, though I beg to differ, for my present continues to be haunted by the misfortune of a past that I have witnessed. Every night, I tuck in my eyes with a soft blink that becomes eternal, awaiting a fantasy that makes my reality bearable. This eternal blink has caged me, entrapping me in a world of my own demise, I am but a victim of my own thoughts. Taken away by the beauty of serenity, I dream of a place where one's self becomes king of his own thoughts. A place where horrid reflections aren't merely but a wall of aloofness. The sensation of cold air entering my window and brushing my face, that is a reality that not many can taste. Peace is a reality that we want to copy and paste, yet we fail to do so as many of us are fighting a race. As I am walking and thinking about peace, a flashback of a memory came to me. Waking up with a clear state of mind, greeted with the delicious smell of pancakes that my mother has cooked for me. As I open the big door, I am welcomed by the bright morning sun that illuminates the room. I see my father strolling through cornfields under the clear blue sky as I see the birds slicing through the fluffy clouds. The breeze brushing off my back as I take in the fresh air of a warm, sunny day. Everything was so peaceful. Something was wrong. Something wasn't right. Waking up in the morning, hearing those birds humming. Waking up not worrying if you're going to be dead or alive. Having a roof over your head and warmth in your heart. The sensation of warm air entering your window and brushing your face. Now that, that is the state of peace. Suddenly, awakened, that peaceful dream begins to fade. That is a reality that not many can taste. Reality strikes, and instead of the fresh, warm air, gunpowder consumes my lungs. I turn to my right, only to see my parents weren't in front of me. I scream their names. I see their face. My voice echoes. Everyone has disappeared. The birds that once soared the skies above became war jets that pierced the clouds. The roar of the jet engines quivers the ground beneath my feet. Terror spreads amongst citizens, fleeing for their lives. Peace is a reality that we all want to relish, yet we fail to acquire. Deep breaths to bring me composure, for I've been through this one too many times. Peace be upon those who died trying, keeping them within our thoughts, yet not understanding why all the dying. War be abused and trying to connect the dots. We fail to see what is right in front of us and live in the midst of ignorance. Not realizing there's always a plus, blinded by the thirst for violence. Peace be within us, through ups, downs, and through mishaps, from dawn until dusk, may our souls be guided by peaceful elapse. Seek towards the green side.
the tunnel advancing to success. Imagine a world of peace, no divide, a place in which we seek progress. Peace is the hope that lays in our eyes. It is the moment of silence for those we admire, upholding our emotions, overcoming demise, positions, take aim, seize fire. Learn to love, rid the despise, never forget those who died. Live in harmony and compromise, and above all, pick peace over pride. Uh-huh.